All right. So when the bases are the same, you simply we will compare exponents directly. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to show you I'm going to write something that might seem kind of abstract here but it's going to be the rule or the guidelines that we use all the time uh, for these exponential equations. If I start with, let's just say our base is B, and then I raise that to, I'm just going to say F of X, okay? So that might be, when I say F of X, that's just another expression. It might be, it might be like 2X. It might be 2X plus 3. It might be just 5. Uh, whatever, may, whatever, I could put another algebraic object up there, the exponent. Does it make sense? Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is say, so our equation is going to be if b raised to the f of x equals b raised to the g of x, okay, if that is happening in front of us, okay, then the way we solve that is that we make the conclusion that f of x has to equal g of x. And what that will do is it will ultimately get us away from looking at the bases of B and just focus now on the equation that is established when we look at the exponents and compare the exponents. So I'll give you, I'll give you a, an easy kind of start to, to this with, a, with an example to hopefully um, validate that statement. Okay. So let's start with a base. Let's say uh, let's say our base is three. We'll say three. So let's just go two x. Okay. So that's exponent. That's an exponential equation because the variable is now in an exponent, right? Okay. Let's say that that is equal to three. To the Okay, so can you see, I'm just going to color code these, can you see that that right there is now that specific 3 to the 2x? Okay, this right here is this specific 3 to the 8. So in our specific example, what would f of x be? If we look at this yellow stuff, what would f of x be? Okay, f of x is just this numerator, or sorry, this exponent right here, right? So isn't this exponent right there just the f of x? So if this is what's happening, then to solve it, we're going to say 2x equals g of x, but if I look at g of x right there, that should correspond to that 8, right? Does that make sense? Everybody see that comparison? Does that let you solve for x now? What's x got to be? Okay, so divide both sides by 2, I should get x to be 4. And now think about this. If I put 4 in, go back to your original equation, put 4 in for x. You would have 3 raised to the 2 times 4. What's 3 to the 2 times 4? It's 3 to the 8, right? Does that make 3 to the 8 equal to 3 to the 8? Yeah. Okay. So that's how we solve exponential equations when the bases are the same. All right. So let's go through. What I want to do is I want to go through a series of examples here. Because they don't always end up being that easy. Um, so we'll, we'll try to build to some more difficult ones, but let's go. <coughs> what? But I, mean, I agree with that to an extent, but if I want to use this stuff in real world scenarios, remember to go back to that question where we asked Ella if she wanted to buy a $50,000 Jeep and she had $3,000 and how long it was going to take her to let that money sit in the account. It did. It was like 150 years. 
Okay, so if I want to figure things out like that, which are a lot messier, then I need to have some type of ability with more complex equations because this is just a general statement for all mathematics. If the math is going to be applicable to the real world, which that's why we learn the math, because it is. Okay, Math is what makes everything in the world work. It's what makes us understand everything in the world. Okay, The world can be a messy place, therefore the math is going to be messy when we use it to understand those things. Does that make sense? So the messier the math, the more applicable it usually is. Um, so I want to I want to build some of that that difficulty here. So let's let's just do this. Well, let's say we have two to the five x plus four equals two to the three x plus one. All right, so first thing we're going to do is look to see if the base is, we know it's an exponential equation, and this will be, you'll run through kind of a hierarchy of decisions every single time you see an exponential equation. You'll ask yourself, okay, are the bases the same? Because that's what we're hoping. Are the bases the same? That's the hope, because if the base is the same, what can we do with the exponents? Compare the exponents. Compare that blue thing to that blue thing, right? So we're going to go 5x plus 4 should equal 3x plus 1. So go ahead and solve that equation. Subtract 3 from both sides, or 3x from both sides. Then subtract 3 from, or sorry, 4 from both sides. Then x will be negative 3 halves, right? Go back to a concept that we've talked about multiple times. <coughs> Let's take this equal. Let's take 2 raised to the 5x plus 4. Well. So what Desmos was doing there, if you were seeing, I, I couldn't put plus 4. It would always drop it down to um the base so if you have uh an exponent that is a quantity you need to put in parentheses for desmos to understand it so that is the left hand side the right hand side we had as 2 raised to the 3x plus 1 okay and now the answer to this problem is where those things intersect and we can see it, they intersect, they cross right here at negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 is, as a fraction, negative 3 halves, right? Okay. Or you can do it this way. You can say, I want that to be, I, instead of using X, I can use, like, call it A, call that A, and then say A equals negative 2 thirds. <coughs> Negative two, or sorry, it was negative three halves, my fault. Negative three halves. And now you see that they evaluate to give me the same y value of 0 0.088. And that can be a way that we could check to see that we've done it correctly. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, questions on that format? Those pretty straightforward? Let's do this. Case two. Bases are not the same, 
but one can be restructured to make them the same. So this is something like maybe we say we have 9 to the 4x equals 3 to the uh, 16. Okay. So we see it's exponential again, right? Exponent has or carries a variable. But because the bases are different, so so previously the, the, the technique we were using earlier is called a one to one correspondence. And you've used this before. This is this is considered a one to one correspondence. The only way that these two things, these two sides are gonna be the same, is if that is the same as that because these are identical. You've seen this with fractions before. If I say that I have like x over five equals four over five, this is a one to one correspondence. The only way that I can make this left hand side identical to this right-hand side, is to make x turn into what? Uh, x turn into 4. That's, a, that's called a one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay? Then it have to, I could cross multiply and all that kind of stuff and solve for x, and it gives me 4, but that one-to-one -one correspondence is nice. Same thing happens here. This is a one-to-one -one correspondence here. So the only way that I can make this true, then, is if these two things are the same. That doesn't exist here yet. Okay? Because these are not identical, so we cannot say that those are identical. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. But this is where laws of exponents are so pivotal in everything that we do. Can I make 9, can I rewrite that so that it is a base of 3? Okay, so 3 times 3, but now let's... Because it's going to, so the way I would have to do that is I'd have to have 3 Okay, so what, what you said first was 3 times 3 and the way that I have to write that would be this way and that's going to be messy, that's going to be confusing Okay, but well, actually let's, let's go with this because I think we can do this Do you guys, do you guys remember and I don't know if it's going to be be insightful, but it should it should work. If I go, just remember saying like a, b, what some product raised to the n power, and we rewrote that as a to the n, b to the n. We're doing that, okay? Because that's a one, and that's one. Basically, you just distribute that n to those exponents. Can I do that here? A is this three, b is this three. So I can rewrite this as 3 to the 4x times 3 to the 4x, right? What do I do with exponents? What do I do with exponents when I have bases the same and I'm multiplying? I add them. So this becomes 3 to the 4x plus 4x, right? Well, what's that the same as? 3 to the 8x. Okay, so that's what we want this to become. And now that, I don't want you to go through that approach that we did in red there because that, that's messy. What Maya then said was she, 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 she changed what she said. She said, instead of writing it as 3 times 3, let's write it as 3 squared, right? So if I write this as three, 9 as 3 squared, I should still have this 4x right there. Does that make sense? And now that's a power to a power. So you multiply the exponents now, and I get 2 times 4x, which is now what? Still 8x, okay? So either approach is okay. I think the, the power to a power is better, okay? Um, so I get 3 to the 8x equals 3 to the 16th. Now, what do we know about our bases? They're the same, so the exponents then must have to be the same. And we can solve that and get x to be 2. Okay. Now, I, mean, I don't. I don't know what my. I would assume three to sixteen is going to be okay. 
It's going to be small enough for the calculator to do it. Sometimes checking these, if if you're using like a TI calculator or uh, like a like a, just a cheap like Walmart ten dollar, fifteen dollar calculator, uh, huh? Well, in in respect to other calculators you can buy, you could spend you could spend a thousand dollars on a calculator. It's going to do a lot more than what you're, and it's going to be more powerful than your ten dollar calculator. So the the cheaper your calculator, the maybe the what I'm trying to say is that it might not be able to calculate something that large, okay, with some of the exponents that we do. But 3 to 16, uh, this calculator will do it, okay. Um, sometimes your calculators, because of their, their memory, their RAM, uh, which costs money to make, uh, won't allow you to do calculations at a certain threshold, okay. Um, but now if I, if I, so 3 to 16 gives me that, now if I go 9, raised to the 4, and we found x to be 2, right? So 4 times 2, we got to put that in parentheses, and I can just type it in as 8 if I wanted to. But does that give me those two things to be the same now? 3 to 16, the same thing as 9 raised to the 8? <coughs> All right, so that's, that's the idea that we get when we talk about um, changing things to different base or changing one of our bases so that they're both the same. Now, here's what kind of stinks about this is that they use some common values a lot that they think are just common knowledge for a lot of people. So I'm just going to show you, like if I took, um, uh, let's just say, let's see here, take two, let's do it this way. I'll just say value, and then we'll go to value squared, value cubed, value to the fourth, value to the fifth, okay? Um, so what they'll do is they'll assume that you know a lot of these relationships. So I say two as my value, and then I say two, and we'll actually go a one, a two, squared equals a two to the third equals a two to the fourth equals a two to the fifth all right good So a lot of times that they assume that you're going to know that I'm only going out to the fifth power here, but a lot of times they're going to assume that you are able to see that when they say you know, one side is going to have a base of three and they write the other side as a base of 243, that you know that there is a base of three existing in that 243, okay, uh, which is, a, I think, maybe not the best um, – the best assumption that they make, okay, but that is something that they do regularly, okay? So basically saying, do you know that relationship between those ordered pairs, or those, not ordered pairs, but those values, do you know the relationship between those values, those, and so forth, all the way through, okay? So maybe a table like this would be nice to have in front of you when you're doing some of these initial problems. So let's do, let's do one like that. Let's say... Um, If I say 5 raised to the 7th, or 7 plus, let's go 2x, equals, uh, let's go 625. <coughs> Something like that. Okay? Now, here I don't have, and on the right-hand side, all the other ones we've done so far were on the right-hand side, or one, I guess one of the sides, we've had always an exponent. Now, 625 does not have an exponent here other than one, okay? You can put it there if you want. Um, but it, looks, it just looks, the structure looks a little bit different because all the other ones both had exponents that were algebraic or non-trivial, okay? This one's a little bit different. Still approach it the same way. We want to see if we can create a base that's the same. 
Does anybody know the relationship between 5 and 625 in terms of powers? What's 5 squared? 25. Okay. What's 25 times 5 again? 125. What's 125 times 5 again? 625. Okay. So that that's what I'm trying to get at is that when we when we see things like this, okay, and a lot of times they'll be they'll be fair to you. They'll try to use a number that you know that's a prime number. So then the only way that I can really make these bases the same is if I take five, raise it to the first, five to the second, five to the third, five to the fourth, and try to find out when do I get 625. Okay. Um, or they'll make it a small, like, even number, and then we can work. I'll show you an example of what I mean by that here in a moment. But um, they'll, they'll try to be at least fair in some manner to you. Um, but if I look at this, this would be the nice thing to have in this table. If this, if this column here is the base column, I see 5, 625, that's to the fourth power. Okay? So now I can, I can rewrite this as 5 to the 7 plus 2x equals now 5 to the 4th, right? <coughs> Thanks. Now, because the base is the same, what can I say about those exponents? Base is the same, exponents have to be the same, right? They're comparable. Okay, so we're 7 plus 2x is equal to 4. I'll get 2x is equal to negative 3. X in is negative 3 halves. And again, if you're ever ever worried, did I do everything right? Do I have the right answer? Plug it back in. Put negative 3 halves in up there for your x. So negative 3 halves times 2 is negative 3. What's 7 plus negative 3? Careful, 7 plus negative 3. 4. So when I plug negative 3 halves back in here, this goes 5 to the 4th. Is that the same thing as 645? Yes, it is. Okay. So that's nice. So let's, let's, let's go a little bit further. Let's, and I'll try, to make it, I'll try to make this example a little bit more difficult, but not as difficult as we can get. Let's go. Uh, we know our powers are three very well. Let's go three. Let's let's rewrite. Let's go nine. Let's go nine to the two x equals. Uh, I'll go. Let's go two forty three. Let's let's do this. I can't. I can't. No. Let's go. Uh, sorry. Nine. Let's go I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go nine. Well, if I type you don't have to use them if I type them out. I'm just trying to benefit those people that want them. Okay, so can I, if I look at those, that's just 27. Uh, so if, if I, which one is this? I think it's best to always look at the smallest base. So what's the smallest base up there? Nine. And now if I go nine to the first, that would be nine. What's nine squared? 81. So that already exceeds the 27, right? Huh? Uh, X plus one. So, that, so I can't rewrite 27 so that's a base of nine, right? Okay, this is a situation where I actually have to alter both bases. What well, what is a common? <coughs> oh, that'd probably be on a pro. So what would that number be? Three. Okay. So if I look at the way I do it, I don't I don't know the correct like nomenclature and the correct terminology uh, there, but I I can see that when I look at nine, 
I can rewrite nine that so that has a base of three, and that would be three squared, right? So nine is three squared. How can I rewrite 27 so that it has a base of three? Three times three is nine. Times three again is 27. Okay. So three squared is nine. Three cubed is 27. And that, again, would maybe be a benefit of having this table, right? Okay. So... Right now, all I've done is I've replaced that 9, so I still have to have that 2x. And here, I still have to have that x plus 1. Okay? Now, what do I do when I have powers to a power? I multiply. So this is going to give me 3 to the 4x, right? Okay? What changes size on me? 3 to the 4x. Now, here, you're going to have to multiply as well, right? But 3 is a singular value, and x plus 1 is a quantity, right? So what am I going to have to do with those when I multiply them? You have to distribute them. Good. Okay. So this is going to turn into... 3 to the 3x plus 3. Okay. Now, are the bases the same? Yep. So what do I can do with the exponents? I can compare them through equality. So 4x equals 3x plus 3. So what's x going to be? x is going to be 3. Okay. Now... We've done a lot of work there, so I'm going to go back to Desmos and see if that works. If I type in 9 to the 2a and type in 27 to the a plus 1, okay, now if I make a go to 3, does it give me the same result? Those are the only two, uh, sorry, that is the only value in which those two exponential expressions are equivalent to one another. Okay. Um, you guys feel comfortable with a little bit of this? Your homework is going to ask you towards the, towards the end of it, there's 10 questions, uh, towards the end of it, they're going to ask you uh, to utilize your knowledge about these things. Okay. So... What's that? No, I haven't signed it yet. Um, I'm going to send this to you in your email if you want to use this tool. Okay? Um, and actually, I'll just make it... Huh? Why can't you get your email? Uh... All right, so I'll put this on uh, Schoology now. Uh, no problem, sister.